in that week leading up to Cardiff, people realised that you know, this was this was it, and we went there on that Friday night. I think just to say goodbye, to have one final moment with the players, and to have a final moment with a loved one before the life support machine was switched off. It was a minor miracle, Aldershot in yellow made it to Cardiff at all last night. A whip round from the Welsh fans raised £6,000 for their unpaid players, but it didn't stop Nathan Blake putting Cardiff ahead inside 10 minutes. And Aldershot and their five YTS trainees hung on until 10 minutes from time when Carl Dale stuck out a leg to make it 2-0. Whether Aldershot can hang on long enough to play York City next Friday looks highly unlikely. It certainly felt like goodbye at full time. Standing here on the East Bank, this is uh, where I first watched Aldershot Football Club in 1974. Uh, the first ever game it was on April, April the 13th, 1974, against Cambridge United. It's a 6 0 win, and it was uh, Jack Howe scoring a hat trick. I didn't stand here on that game, I actually stood in the North Stand, but thereafter, when I first started coming to games on a regular basis, this was where I always stood with um, my dad, my brother, um, and my happiest memories as a child, without any question, was standing here um, watching heroes that became um, part of the, the, the fabric here at Aldershot and players who many years, many decades later are still um, spoken about with such fondness. Players like Murray Brody, Alex McGregor, Joe Joplin, Glenn Johnson, roll the, that team from the late 70s off. Um, Far better than I could these days, where you, you know, I, it was just something that is entrenched in my mind and how much those players meant to me. The wrong people, perhaps, were getting involved with the football club. They didn't understand the DNA of the football club and the DNA of how important the supporters club was. There was times when the supporters club became more isolated from the board of directors. In my opinion was a major mistake by the people running the football club. And then it got worse and worse and worse and when Terry Lewis became the chairman, um, the club again was in financial crisis. I do remember the last game at Cardiff as well and seeing everyone's faces and um, particularly the people I've known from many years um, who've been supporting the club and it was a very sad day for the players as well I mean there was a lot of young players in that team at that time um, who'd gone down there and some of them were playing I think for nothing to uh, to get us through and try and get something for the club but I think we all knew at that Cardiff game that that was it and um, yeah it was a uh, I remember the drive home being a very sad one because uh, we thought that might be the last time we saw all the shot play. Ultimately, the club has to survive, and that's, that's the main thing. And whatever that takes, that's what's, what's needed. So, if it needs to survive within its means, that's, that's what it has to do. And I do remember the Cardiff fans having a um, bucket collection. I think they raised something like five thousand pounds on that evening, but I think we all knew it was to, to no avail. Um, yeah, no, I just remember people like Steve Wignall and Ian McDonald who were part of that final squad who had been senior pros for all the shot and had some great times and for them it must have been a terrible experience. I've got many, many happy memories of uh, all the shot. I came to all the shot in uh, 1981 uh, in a straight swap deal with Malcolm Crosby, went to New York City and then I came down here. and. Uh, you know, I thought it'd be for like uh, a couple of seasons and see my contracts out, and uh, it, it developed in quite a love affair with Old Shot, to be honest, as, uh, as, as history has told. And, uh, you know, like I say, I've got many, many great memories. One big recollection I had was I was substitute that night, and I think, I don't know, maybe, I think it might have been one sub or two subs that we were allowed in those days. But their assistant manager was a guy called Jimmy Goodfellow. And I played with Jimmy Goodfellow at Workington, uh, so like when I was 19, stroke 20. And uh, so like our fans were over in the far corner of the ground, I think there probably was 150 old shot fans there. And uh, 
Anyway, they were all, we were getting, we got beat 2-0. I think we were getting beat 2-0. It was about 10 minutes ago. And all our fans were shouting for me to go on. And I was giving it. Yeah, we was going, come on, get yourself on. I went, no, I'm not going on. No. Like this, you know, the young lads, Chris Tomlinson, and the ex roundsman son, you know, people like that. We, who we gave Dave, he was doing the chance to play league football. And uh, anyway, Jimmy come trotting down the touchline and he went, get yourself on. Said mm -hmm. them shouting for you. So, so I went on for 10 minutes and uh, anyway, and at the end of the end of the game, all all the old shots. But I think at the end at the, at the end of the game, all the players went into the stand. That's right. To 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 speak to all the and dear old Mary Sweet, you know, who was probably my my biggest fan, and uh, sadly she passed away many many years ago. But uh, lovely lady, you know, I I could go to captain of the team every time I got off the bus, she was there and she shoved twenty pound in my hands, and she go get the lads a drink after the game. And if I went to a home game and I saw her, she'd give me a bag of sweets. She'd go, there, yeah, there's a bag of sweets for your kids. You know, so, I mean, she, she, along with many, many others, typified a, a, a staunch Aldershot fan. But a sad day for the football club, absolutely. You know, it was like losing, it was like losing a close friend or a member of the family. People probably think, what's he on about? But people that, don't follow football will think I'm talking gibberish. People that do follow football will, will, will know exactly what I mean, and that's and that's how I feel. Um, probably how we all feel, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, very very sad day, very sad occasion. But that night in Cardiff, I'll never ever forget it. You know, I thought I thought I'd lost something that was really really dear to me. I meant everything uh, in my life, and you know, still is a massive part of my life. Um, to you know, to this day, but at that time there was nothing else that was really important to me uh, apart from football. So you know, the likes of Terry Owens, Graham Brookland, and those people that pulled it together. You know, as a young fan, I couldn't really see you know the impact that they had. But that legacy for that bit to be living today, I'm eternally grateful to those people because having a football club in your community, don't kid yourself, it is so so important. That thought of losing it broke my heart. You know, I had tears in my eyes. Um, you know, worrying that we're going to lose, but the rest is history, you know, and the rising of the Phoenix, you know, I don't think we can ever, ever forget that. And I'm eternally grateful to those people that gave us, you know, this football club back. I mean, you know, I thought it was lost. Thank you. Of all clubs, and unfortunately so many clubs up and down the country are suffering financial hardships, getting themselves into difficulties, chasing some unattainable dream, but all shot town of all clubs know we cannot and should not do that because we know where it can end so painfully and so horribly. In the end, March 1992 was probably the best thing that could have happened because out of that horrible low grew this, this beautiful new thing and it was the phoenix rising from the ashes.